You're on mute. Patrick, I think you mute yourself just now. Hello, can everybody hear me? You can put your thumbs up if you can hear. Right, okay. So um, just a quick welcome to uh, Yushien. Um, we just had a quick little chat before we got on here. And it's sort of over to her and she's going to promote and go through her portfolio. What we'll try and do is, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. Uh, and at the end, we can ask some more questions. But it's really to see her practice and her journey from doing her degree to her MA at Goldsmiths and sort of going through her, her work and seeing what she does and trying to understand. And um, and she's got a, a, a massive array of work. So it's really interesting to see. So hopefully we can share, you can share you, Xian, and and it's sort of over to you. Hi everyone, I'm just shared my screen. Can everyone see that? Cool. Yes. Um, is it is it working, Yusha? I think it's not. Um, try the curses. Try your curses. It doesn't go down for the slides somehow. Oh, I think it's working now. Yeah. Yes. So I'm Yuxuan, um, and I'm really glad to have this FIDA member moments to share my work today with you. So I will share about my personal experience of working on illustrations through my um, entire journey since my university course. So I'm a London-based illustrator and a cross-disciplinary designer. I studied fashion design before, and I find my passion and interest in illustration, and I start to work more works on illustration, and that turns into my career. Yes, so what I like to look into my illustration or what I want to present in my illustration is narratives in fashion. I want to present the emotion or the message you want to convey through the fashion illustration. And also I see illustration as a powerful tool to communicate the brand image or brand idea. And also I enjoy playing with colors and materials, which you can see through my works. Um, I was previously very likely shortlisted in draw fashion competition and six feeder award. And that's about me. This um, image at the right is the one I entered the shortlist in last year's FIDA award. Yes. So, um, now I will present you some of my works in my university. I had my fashion bachelor degree in University for the Creative Arts, Epsom. And as there, we start to learn about fashion design, learn to make garments, a lot techniques about sewing. And also we learn about fashion illustration as a way to add into your portfolio and back up with your presentation of your design idea and your collection. So this one is from my year two collection called Hunting Spirit. So it's a clash of masculinity and femininity. Um, I adopt the silhouette of men's wear hunting suits and the ballet dress and uh, re and collage them together to present the ideal femininity in my eye, which is females are strong and soft at the same time. So I also want to include the mysterious part of the female, which I 
always love. So this is the line up for my final design and I also made the garment as a right. Then for my year three work, pre-collection work doesn't suit. I play with traditional suits with absurdity and with shapes. So I want to break the traditional notion of this very formal wear into and presenting it with humor and creativity. But in this is the fashion illustration I worked for the collection. So in the collection, although I played a lot of the collage of the shapes, contrast of the materials, the fabrics, but I also and always want to obtain the sophisticated femininity in my work. And in this one, unlike the previous collection I did purely digitally with my Procreate, I worked this on paper with a lot of mixed media materials such as uh, wax pastels, color inks, color pencils, and markers, which gives a lot of rich textures in this collection, but also it retains a very clean finish. To emphasize, and I think that links to the very clean um, tailored suit silhouette. And then I will talk a little bit about the different styles or materials I use in my illustrations. So this one is another project from my second year project. And this one focuses a lot on fabric and textile textiles. So in this one, I paid extra more attention to rendering the textiles for the garments. And for me, I think when I work on my fashion illustration, um, cause I always explore different um, styles and materials in my sketchbook works. So I can pick from them and use the suitable ones for this collection. So when I work on my fashion illustration, it's a bit like I am the art director for this project and, and I am choosing a right or very suitable style the material, the colors, the emphasis, the focus of this project to the illustrations I create. So all of them can have a very coherent look and deliver the message I want to want people to look at. For example, this one, I want people to look more at the um, textile design of this work, less than the silhouette. And I also want to bring in this collage of textiles, which is a key focus of my collection. So here is a bit of my BA works. Some are from the live drawing class I did during, during my BA course, and some are from the other university projects. And you can see there's a range of explorations of materials. So from the top left, this I use mixed media paints, uh, which gives you this enamel finish of the paints. And it gives you, uh, I can play with the idea of control and unexpected through you pulling paints on the paper. Um, while the, I also work intensively with watercolor and color ink because I really like these bright colors. And if I work on a project focusing on the youth culture or younger generation, I will use these kind of bright colors to bring out this vibrancy. So um, after I graduated from UCA, I moved to my master degree in Goldsmiths. I studied design expanded practice course in Goldsmiths. So although I'm still in 
fashion studio, but we intensively collaborate with other students from different backgrounds, such as graphic design, interior design, space design, service design. So it opens up my practice as a designer. So I'm not only making clothes, but I think about clothes. Uh, through the intensive research on fashion, I developed my interest, research interest into people's relationship with their clothes. So um, although I did a um, project about slow fashion and craft fashion for my final project in BA, it, um, it was unfortunately unable to proceed due to the COVID. So I continue the idea of slow fashion craft and craft fashion in my master degree research. And I find it's important to remind people of their bonding between them and their clothes so they can cherish their clothes. So um, I worked on a project about secondhand fashion because I noticed the rising trend of vintage fashion among Chinese students around me. And uh, due to the cultural difference in China and the UK, people used in China used to reject secondhand clothes. And I want to find out why people start to accept secondhand clothes. So I Try to. I worked a, on a series of interviews and and podcast, and then I turned out to present this research, this uh, relationship between people, their personality, their presentation of self with their garments. So they a lot of people they find secondhand clothes gives them a lot more freedom to and, and variety to choose about their personal representation. And they also enjoy the garment hunting as a tra treasure hunting process. And also I work on other I work on other ways to present the stories behind fashion. For example, I recently I worked on a comic thing about garish shoes. So it's the story behind shoes and my choice but to buy shoes due to the my personal experience of um, my personal experience of uh, studying in Singapore and have these very strict rules of wearing white shoes every day. Um, this you can find these bits in my personal website. So I won't talk too much here and then we can see how these research on fashion narratives and the explorations of slow fashion and secondhand fashion influence my work so after i graduated in 2000 late 2021 i started to thinking about my career as an illustrator because i really enjoy creating images and I want to move on. So in 2000, early 2022, I worked on a series of fashion illustrations, but they are not adopted, uh, they are not influenced by um, fashion brands, but from my personal observation from street fashion and vintage fashion. So I in this project I illustrating people I observed and it's a collection it's a collection closer to me. And also in this collection I explored a new technique with um with acrylic. So these interesting marks are made with acrylic on the paper intentionally or unintentionally. And after that, I add on, and I will consider these marks I had on paper, whether it works or not, whether I like the colors and shapes or not. And then I will add in the face to fill in the gaps and make it into a body. So there's a very small image at the right, top right corner of the process of making these kind of patterns. 
And then this is a quite important fashion illustration series I did because in this one, I start to combine the digital illustration, digital painting and traditional illustra illustration techniques together. In digital works, I tend to have a very flat style, but I find I like the texture and the the interesting textures and the different effects and even accident I had during the during making illustrations on paper. So I studied my previous work and emphasize the textures in these collections to retain the nature of digital illustration which you can which you can get very clean shapes very clean um silhouettes and you can have very wild choice of colors but also i obtained pantry textures and brush strokes in the work and the work in the middle which i mentioned before i was shortlist in six fida award for the category of still life um, I besides fashion illustration, I did a lot of still life illustration study because I find it's a very good way for you to explore shapes, colors, textures, and even compositions. And this one I particularly like about it is the mood it presents gives you this very moody and serenity. And also it plays a lot with the contrast of different brush strokes, different textures, which is really hard for you to get purely with digital illustration without the study of traditional method. And you cannot get that vibrant colors with traditional illustration on paper. And um, here's some more recent work. This is the life drawings I did during London Fashion Week. Um, because I was doing on site, so I did quite roughly, quite quickly with line works. And this is um, this is a really amazing brush I had in my Procreate, and um, I think the very interesting thing for me to uh, work on digital illustration is that there's so many variations you can have with your brush and you can ad adjust your tools, your brush, change them to fit your need. So this is um, my very own digital brush. So you can have different colors within one stroke when you vary the pressure on your iPad. And this is the most recent work, I guess, I did last week. So it's also live drawing on site. I was invited to a um, creative meetup and there was live music there. So I was observing people and illustrating them. And, and I got this um, pure black sketchbook so, so that I can test them with different pens. Um, generally, I like to collect art supplies and different art materials. So I'm always very passionate about explore new materials and see what they can bring and what effect they can merge with my personal style and personal habit. So I think this black uh, sketchbook works really well with my personal line style and it gives you this neon light effect to illustrating a um, music life in the very dark room. And then I will talk a little bit about my other uh, my works other than fashion illustrations. So as I mentioned before, I worked a lot on still life and lifestyle drawings and paintings. So these are a little bit from my previous works with um, paintings uh, with small scale paintings with acrylic 
and explore the and it is the moment of life and can be a decorative painting in the in the home. And here's a little bit about my sketchbook digitally and traditionally. Um, so I love to explore materials, markers, watercolors, um, inks, and also colors as well. And I think they gradually build up my experience in illustration. And then it can become a very rich resource for me when I want to illustrate something. And also, I forget to mention that I was actually a self-taught illustrator. So I didn't have any formal training in drawings or paintings, but I quite like illustrations. So I, I was always observing and drawing and trying new materials in my throughout my previous life. And um besides fashion illustration, as I mentioned, I quite like the narrative and presenting the narrative to the audience. So I am currently enrolled in a program called Pathway into Children's Illustrate uh Children's Publishing. It's a very great program to allow people with uh, minority people from minority background and uh, invite their voice into children's publishing indus industry. So there's a few illustrations I worked with picture books and character designs. It might appear a bit different from my fashion illustration, but again, my focus is always on the playful approach of materials and the uh, the brave explorations of colors. And here's also again a few of my illustration sketchbooks. So for me, illustration is a very useful tool to express myself, to communicate with others, and it's also a message to document a moment in life. So these are the travel images I had with in my travel sketchbook. And it can also, um, sometimes if I really like the composition or the colors, I will later work on it and turn it into a proper painting. And lastly, I will end up with my, uh, end up my presentation and sharing with the last slides. So on the left is my illustration of my studio in 2021. Although I changed a lot of places and currently work from home, but my studio looks more or less like this with, uh, <coughs> sorry, with my laptops, my materials all around on the table and a lot of images painted on the wall. And on the right or in the middle is the recent work I worked towards the FIDA critic. It's all it's also a very great opportunity for the FIDA members to to illustrate fashion weeks and also have enjoy critique from others. So this is the one I worked for, uh, worked in response to Louis Vuitton's uh, Autumn and Winter 2000, uh, 2023 collection, and it's a look three. I intentionally bring in the very anime style in this fashion illustration because I want to see how this anime or young culture clash with the very traditional luxury brand. And I also intentionally emphasize the body curve and the exaggerate, exaggerated shape of this lady. So, um, yeah, I think that's all. Ex and that's my excellent. I'm, I'm going to try and unmute everybody one second. I think 
that should be everyone can ask a question. <clears throat> well, f firstly, thank you. Thank um, you. And, you know, I can see some great comments on there. And, you know, I think with the works that you've you've shown is a massive array. I would love to see some of your illustrations, even your still lifes. Could they go back into fashion as a, because you had you, your fashion pieces, they have a sort of playful Victor and Rolf feeling of sculpture. They're very sculptural. Yes. Experimental. And I would love to see you trying to combine some of them back into it, even if they became shapes and silhouettes for canvases rather than they use just used for fashion. So could they you use the silhouette as your actual canvas shape? Yeah. And I think that could be quite a nice way to be quite playful because you're kind of going from one place to another. Mm. And I think you do have a good sensibility for fashion as well. I think uh, very experimental, but the finishing look really good. Um, and I like your sort of interrogation into uh, this sort of slow fashion, this people re recycling, reusing, um, and looking into your own heritage to inform your practice, like with the white shoes and stuff like that, which I thought was quite a nice um, way to disrupt the way that you work. And you you feel like you, there's a bit of tension in looking at dirty boots and messy things and stuff like that. So I, I don't think showing them is good because it shows that they're part of your communication. Uh, but I would love to see how you could bring that back into your work again. Yes. Um, I do know the pathways. I don't know if anyone, anyone else knows uh, the pathways where if you want to do children's book illustration, um, is it just for children's books? I can't remember. because I think seen... it's just for children's books. Children's... Yeah. Because yeah. um, there's a lot of great illustrators, graphic designers, fashion illustrators who've done books. So, and I think it is, and the support and advice and the mentorship is really good as well with them. Yeah. Uh, I um, think I know a few of them, so. I think, uh, just to interrupt a bit, I think um, the amazing thing to have children's design, uh, children's illustration and fashion design, uh, illustration and together is because in fashion, we always emphasize silhouette and colors to construct the garments and which it brings a very strong visual identity when you construct or create characters in children's illustration. Yeah, no. Well, <clears throat> uh, Patrick, yes, Patrick. jump in. Uh, just um, first of all, well done. Very interesting. I, I put in a few comments. Um, it's very unique and um, elegant and a beautiful color sensibility. One of the thoughts I had when you were going into going back into fashion, having come from the fashion kind of designer background, I was wondering whether, you know, the lovely drawings and the lovely sense of color. I wonder if they could be turned into prints that could then be printed on onto second hand garments to incorporate mm -hmm. the slow fashion vintage style and update it into kind of quirky but elegant color palette garments for um, uh, resale. Mm. Just a thought, yeah. Because the, the print, that the, the way you draw and the color sensibility that you have is beautiful. And then I saw your garments hanging in the goldsmith uh, image and I thought, what would it be like if you took some of that imagery, scaled it up, repeated mm. it, and then printed it onto some of your secondhand vintage garments? I yeah. think it could be really cool. And it would tick your box of like recycling, reused, you know? Yes, yes. I think it's a really nice idea to towards upcycling. So you use yeah. your design and your illustration to make this comment new again and also yeah. your um lifestyle and still life imagery is ideal for like um what <laughs> patrick has taught me is the reportage kind of work that um uh, papers and uh, uh magazines 
like, but I could see some of those images making fantastic prints on T-shirts. Yeah. Because the colors and the even the fluidity, you wouldn't have to do very much because the, the looseness of it kind of printed onto a T-shirt or a mm -hmm. tote bag. I, again, I'm thinking your slow fashion, you know, I think it would really update things and it it's it's it it would be different, you know, mm -hmm. and I do believe and I've taught a lot of students. <laughs> I do believe that your color sense is is beautiful and is different and obviously is unique to your sensibility. And I think that will give you a unique selling point as well. So that's my contribution. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome. You're welcome, darling. And any 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 other thoughts? But I, I do one one thing I do feel about um, fashion creatives, fashion illustrators. I'm shocked that not more of them work back into fashion, as in make prints, make T-shirts, make silk scarves, because it's a perfect, it's perfect product for fashion illustration. And to this sort of, you know, you could go on to Depop or Vinted or any of these spaces and buying old sort of garments and then reprinting onto them, embroid on them, because your work would work as multiple sort of textures. And I yep. think that's what I'd love to see is that you could draw, you could uh, foil block, um, all these different elements would add a layering and a sort of depth to the actual, whether it's a t-shirt and it, and we're seeing people online. I was looking yesterday on Etsy about people like buying trainers and then drawing mm. on them and then reselling mm. them at mm. like three to four times the value. So there is a value in uniqueness. And that's what Patricia's saying is, what is your USP? And we have to kind of think like that. We can't just go, oh, well, we're just an illustrator and we like drawing. That's kind of a weak opting out option now. It has to be, what is my USP and who am I? And who am I as a communicator? And how do I survive and make money in this space rather than seeing it as, oh, it's just a hobby. And, and, and that's kind of, the approach of a lot of people is they have a sort of, oh, I don't want to have a business mind about this, um, even though they want to make money. So it's kind of sometimes you have to think 360. Right. OK, let's go back into fashion. Let's do children's books. Let's do this. Let's try printing on paintings. Christopher Kane does it. He's a perfect example of someone who's drawing on garments, now painting on canvases, then reprinting his prints from his canvases back onto his garments then re is a, is a whole system of experimentation that happens within his workflow. Victor Rolf, similar. Um, and you see a lot of the designers now, they're kind of mixing all of these things up and they're being really playful, like Kenzo, who I've been looking at a lot recently. Um, and this sort of being more of a playground of work. So I, I think a fascinating uh, portfolio of work and, it, you know, I, as I did say to you before you came on and I did a bit of investigation work and saw the breadth of work that you had, like your past work, your drawings with your pencils. Um, and I think that sensibility of the, the hand drawn work, it reminds me of, you know, this sort of Art Nouveau in a modern sort of sense, the sensibilities there of Art Nouveau. And I feel that you you could bring a bit of that back. I think the the sort of arts and crafts, the decorative, we're missing it. I think we've become modernists, minimalists, and we're yeah. losing the sort of the beauty of making something slow. I, I think it's being it's they're trying to bring it back. You know, Jonathan Anderson's pushing it. Mm -hmm. But I feel that uh I'd love, you know, as as we say, this is a journey for you now. And, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing more. And, you know, the objective was to really let you to talk about your work, which was great. You know, this is just a bit of feedback from us. But if anybody else has anything to say, I think there was a few comments on there, mainly all nice things saying well done. And, you know, the, the use of the acrylics effect combined with line was a really nice. I loved them. I thought they were fascinating. I had to kind of investigate you to create the the promotional pieces so mm. you probably i don't know if you because i went and found all of them things online but they were lovely pieces and 
it's amazing that they could have been missed. So it was nice to see him again as well within your work. So I'd like know. to just um, quickly say. Yes, please. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Hi, Yijan. Thank you so much. It was lovely to see your work. And as you were going through, I was just reminded me, and it's interesting what you just said, Patrick, about the Art Nouveau. I'm just grabbing um, my Vogue book and looking at um, illustrations from the 19. 20s I believe and 30s Helen Dryden and those kind of elements and some of your work reminded me a little bit of that and even the anime um as you mentioned the anime influence mm. and I was kind of thinking that maybe that's in terms of illustration pure illustration there's a USP I could kind of see that there but bringing it up to date with the I love the acrylic blur kind of scraping and the acrylic effect bringing that modern touch to that, you know, beautifully drawn image. And I just think there was something something in there as well. But I agree about looking at different aspects of mixed media and, um, you know, printing and those those kind of applications could be could be lovely, but it's beautiful work. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. Great. And any, any, any other thoughts, anybody? I can see a few other names on there. Any fashion design minds in there? uh before we kind of head off but yeah I, I think as you can hear from everybody all good feedback um and it's it's not a critique here it's more of just us having a chat and you really celebrating your work so and it was it was great to see because I've kind of seen you come from university and kind of come out and mm -hmm. then come into this so you know it's, it's again anyone who does this is a brave decision to sit stand there and sort of discuss your work and let us have a look at it and see your mind but I think going forward I'm I'm intrigued to see where you go and mm -hmm. I know like you know it's, it's funny to see some of your illustration work that you're doing for the books has become super detailed and I'd wonder if you could bring in like simplify that a little bit and and bring back some of that other work that would be for me because mm -hmm. I, I collect children's books as well so you know I, I love children's books and to see um the way that you allow the mind to be playful within the space mm -hmm. so I, I, i'd love to see some of that and i'd love to see a, a, a more fashion-based children's book yeah. I, I, think, I was just about Hello, to say Katie. that as well because i've got um i've got kids and i'm obsessed with children's books as well and I think for me, one of the UPSs that came out of that was the zine and the sort of child's book point of view. And I actually think that that could be pushed from a more fashion point of view. And I'm starting to see it in like the V&A children's book collection. There is this sort of crossover between fashion and children's storytelling starting to come through the illustrations. So I wonder where that could go. I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't ignore your don't uh, break things apart try and bring in that mm. like Katie was saying you know harness it in and I know people like the VNA and places like that they're really crying out for people like you to add uh, content for them because we're lacking a little bit of it so even if you go to the VNA and have a look around and then look at what's there and try and bring it into your work and let it inform it a little bit then the VNA is kind of being quite targeted. You can target brands and companies by visiting them and 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 discussing when you know when I was at the VNA, this informed my my spread in this book, and then you become on their radar. You'd be surprised. That's how things happen um, from you just going there, visiting and talking about it. So, so. Patrick, and um, who who was the woman? I think she's a definitely fashion illustrator possibly fashion designer, but she created a character, which I think was a fashion conscious mouse that actually went to Paris and then went to Milan. And, you know, the, it became a blend between children's story, fashion imagery and narrative, you know. Is, and is, I'm she thinking, an is she an Australian illustrator? I think she is it Hess. Would it be Megan Hess or no? Yes, yes, it is. Sarah, Sarah Darby knows her. She created, no, but she created a character. Yeah, so a little mouse. It's a little mouse that travels yeah, around. Yeah, she travels out to all of the kind of fashion-centric places. And I'm thinking with um, the uh, 
desire to get into children's uh, books with the uh, talent and the lovely uh, drawing ability and the color palettes that and the creation of characters that she's doing at the moment. I wonder whether we could or she could, we could, we could <laughs> uh, combine all of these three elements to create something that's fashion centric, that this character drawn anime meets the beautiful color palettes or the reportage goes to Paris, goes to Milan, goes to Japan. You know, I think it yeah. could be interesting. Yeah. Um, and there's a series of, I think. And, and, awards, and also financially, um, you know, it's if you were going to a publisher, this is kind of a, uh, a soundbite uh, that you could sell to a publisher, if you know what I mean. It's it's not just showing imagery, it's selling a, a, an idea, a concept, a story, and slightly based upon a proven successful track record of somebody else doing it totally different from you. But I sort of think, hmm, maybe that could open a few doors and bring in a few, few sterling pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's a that's a nice idea. So, I, I guess the good ideas now is note note them down, and kind of have them in your your book of ideas to where to go forward. And I, I think there's plenty here for you to do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So which is which is a great thing is you know the objective is to talk about your work and then bounce a few ideas and and get some feedback. So and and a great presentation came across amazing. really well. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. So, so thank, I'm, thank you. I'm hope now and um, uh, wishing you all the very best and may the road rise before you. <laughs> well, so ho ho hopefully this will inspire the rest <laughs> of you and, and trigger some ideas uh, moving forward with the others. I think we've got another one later on this evening. So hopefully I'll see some of you back later. Um, and every every presentation is different. So they're all interesting. But but lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye Thank everybody. You. Bye. Thank you. Excellent Bye. work. Thank you. Bye.